Like okay. we just met. <laughs> we'll just meet. Like, I appreciate you inviting me out to your house. A stranger. <laughs> w, <laughs> w, welcome to my house. <laughs> For the first welcome to the underlayer <laughs> of my house. <laughs> All these years of us doing stuff, yeah. I feel like I'm a little bit quiet, and you're kind of a little bit quiet. Mm -hmm. But like, you've been going steady. Like, if I turn this way, like, I feel like you've been over. You know what I mean? Like, pushing the gas a little. You know what I mean? In a, in our own little world. I try to keep moving. You know, keep things going. You know? Yeah, you are always got something going on, oh. and got something. Exploring stuff, <laughs> trying different things. Plus, you things. like you like machines. You like you oh know yeah, what I mean like like yeah we yeah the machines the like the mechanics of making things. You know when yeah, you when you showed me that uh, masking tape, that transfer tape. Yeah, a light bulb just went off. It was like somebody just showed you like the secret to the the universe. It's okay. It's <laughs> in masking tape, because I've seen two ways. It's either like with me, it was like. Cha ching yeah. <laughs> like something clicked or some people go like fuck this really it's tedious like they, oh it's tedious for like, me i was like i can draw sloppy and cut clean yeah sloppy looks beautiful <laughs> when it's cut clean you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like so yeah no i remember doing that a lot i don't even know where that's i remember running blue tape and that's tedious and takes forever and those those double cuts through that little Fucking sucks. You never yeah. quite get that double cut through I the... I think years ago, I think when we first started doing ABL, my first wall right. was with masking tape. And it was that regular... Oh, it wasn't even blue tape. It was just the uh, regular yellow, yellow tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that took forever. And it came out, eh, okay. Well, see, I remember, yeah, I remember doing walls, but I think I had figured out that white stuff. So it's like, I remember doing that snake one. Yes. All crazy or whatever yeah. and stuff. That was like, I should have only concentrated on that. You know what I you mean? Know, I have my brain. We everywhere. still have the piece you did for us that was in like 16 different panels. 16? Yeah. We had an idea that it'll be a, to do a mural. It'll be a great idea. Instead of doing one big mural, let's just break it up into 16 panels. And then the artist paint it on, paint their piece, and we could take it off the walls. It ended up being a disaster. <laughs> But it was a big bear, and we still have it. It's it's like a big was jigsaw it? puzzle with two foot by two foot, you know, pieces. I don't, did I? You I did, did one, that? yeah. Okay. We See, might put I that. I know I'm getting old, man, because like the one good thing about my brain is I could always remember, literally, could remember every single painting I painted, mm -hmm. every single one. I could remember it. That was because that first big show I got. I was in the parking lot. I brought some friends, waited in. To get up to the the parking garage, yeah, and then got there, and it was like I didn't even make it in. There was a point in the night where I think Michi, myself, and Jabari were all outside of the show and couldn't get back in. We had our families outside; and we I were trapped out it. there. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah, we were just out there like, "Yo, we're part of the show. We need to get in." Right? And like, sorry, yeah, I think capacity. I was like, I got paintings in there. <laughs> like, no, and Michi was trying, and then it was like he got sucked in. <laughs> I was like, holy, but then you turned and you looked and you're like, what the fuck? You saw like, I, was it, was it Dose Green? Was it, who was it that did like, did this yellow with like, that was black, Fuse. Biggie, Fuse. That was Fuse Green. Yeah. So that when I, yeah, when, good I memory, it, yeah. when I saw it, because it, vinyl. That was all vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, Fuse. So I've been like, kind of titter tattering on that world when I saw that. I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. It just looked like a, like a tattooed up painting of like all these different things. So I remember seeing that in the window and then turning and seeing like all the fucking stairs full. Yeah, people. And then looking like we just spent like an hour and a half getting up a park and then looking at this line and I was like, holy shit. Like to me, like, I don't know, that, there's nothing been that underground, above ground like that shut down. The museum down. That shut down the whole block, man. There was cars yeah. like we don't come late. That's what was my thing. We did a a news spot, I think, um, the day of or right the day before, and I feel like I yeah, we I was, were, with we were Michi, like hearing this kind of like yeah, because it was like um like this you know for back then for like a street art 
underground art show to be on the, the morning shows. That was unusual. Oh, I think I remember and that. And we walked in to the TV station and Stedman Graham was on his way out. You know, we were like, oh my God, it's Stedman Graham. <laughs> and then George Duke had a, a segment. And then so it was us. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if I knew you at that point. Yeah, like, I, I don't remember meeting know, you. <laughs> it was only, like, I don't know if I knew you till like... You came to the warehouse with Michi, didn't you? I was, when all that was going on, yeah, the, I, I was the there. Yeah, because I saw Michi's little setup. It had, yeah. like, a couple of our paintings yeah. in it and stuff. And I feel like I might even gone to the high before. You know, yeah. I feel like I, I saw, like, the warehouse. You had it set up. I was like, holy yeah. shit. And we might have met at the warehouse. Yeah. Because, um... That's when the Met, which is like... For, I mean, I'm forgettable. The Met... You, you're cool. <laughs> you're cool. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> you know, that's before there were rules in that place. It was just like the outlaw of the land. That's you know? how everything felt like. Because there was no... Um, you could do whatever you want out there, you know? It's kind of weird because there are at two different points in time and two different points in life, you know? The goat farm is more of like a creative community. And yeah, then, it almost started from like squatters yeah, that just, were creative. Like, yeah, yeah. It has a really like rustic feel to it. Yeah. And it's a really cool vibe. And then then you had the Met back then. And this like the early 2000s. I would say it was just like raw warehouse space. Um, you had on one side, you had like chop shops. You know, people were doing car stuff. And then you had artists doing whatever. Then you had like nightclubs happening. And oh. then you had places where you don't know what's going oh, on in there. Dude selling... <laughs> <laughs> blank CDs. Yeah, you don't know what's a happening. A fucking warehouse full of blank CDs. Dude, yeah. run in blank CDs like crazy. So I'll tell you, the first time more everybody got together, you know, all the artists were getting together to work for the first time. You know, this is back when I was driving the Xterra, the white Xterra. <laughs> you know, I pull up in the truck. It's a nice ride, man. <laughs> I, I, it was like my legendary vehicle. You yeah. Know? Uh, I pull. I up had a minivan. Yeah, yeah, the my minivan. legendary <laughs> minivan, dude. <laughs> you know, I jump out my truck. I had on a, a military jacket like a general. Oh, boy. And then we started walking, and then a semi truck came down the middle, snagged the power line, ripped it off the building, and the power line smashed the windows of my car. For real? Yeah, that was day one. That's how everything started working on the, at, at the Met that time. I'm here, it, mom. It's You're like, yeah, we do well, it. There's no face that. Yeah, like, Write a letter or whatever. <laughs> So then we were in the warehouse working, and the guy that ran it, he was, we started, I think we started playing darts or something, you know, yeah. throwing darts. And then over time, that escalated to like a BB guns, and then, oh, then it got to crossbows inside. Yeah. <laughs> there was, there was no one I, telling us, like, don't do this. Shooting a crossbow indoors is not the best idea, but it sounds cool. I would cool. not turn it down. If, How could if, you? if there's no one in front of me, you know, yeah, it you seems know, safe. There's there was no... a wow. bunch of artists in the room. It was like, hey, I got a crossbow. I'm like, word? The f most fun New Year's is Derek, Urban Medium. Mm -hmm. He called up and he was like, I have a New Year's party. I went to the like black market or underground market and bought mm -hmm. just a shit ton of airsoft rifles, like boxes of them. <laughs> and he's like, I got chicken wings. And airsoft and airsoft rifles. I'm talking tons of airsoft rifles. And he was in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Still to this day, I think of it like as it was the most glorious time because mm -hmm. your fucking gun would break. You're like, fuck it. Open another box, <laughs> pull out a fucking machine gun, put it with airsoft. And people were down the hallways with paintings blocking walls. You yeah. know what I mean? Dun, 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 dun. So the little yellow pellets. Oh, it was an artist battle with like, uh, yeah, with like paintings being blocked down a art. Oh, it was it was still, there's no New Year's that will top chicken wings and airsoft, airsoft from, the, yeah. from the market. I feel like I went to one Art Beats and Lyrics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually went to it, but like. You never been to any of the shows? I always. I'm, I'm, oh, dude, I'm you, missed out on, a, you just missed out on all the good shows, man. I went to, I could describe it to you. It was very white and sleek um, during one party. It was very, I don't know if it was a Jack Daniels part or whatever, but. Are you talking about the compound? Maybe. Maybe it yeah, was the, the compound, compound yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you get to work with the legendary ass people? Well, they like you and Jabari with some. Man, we've been working together for like like since two thousand and four or five. Yeah, you know, yeah. and we've done over way over a hundred shows. So that's nuts. You know, and you get it like when it as far as when it comes to uh, 
like working with musicians. Right. I tell you, um, Maceo Maceo from De La Soul, you know, we did a show during the Kentucky Derby in Louisville and he hung out the whole time. Like from like opening door to like all, it was like, it was cool, but it was, we're not used to that. You're like, you know, usually people come in, they do what they do. They do the sound check and they leave. Um, I think 2012, that's when we first really started. Um, that's when we worked with um, a Shepherd Ferry's agency, um, Black Market. Okay, yeah. Shepherd Ferry. Yeah. Give me a true. You sent me that picture of him looking at my shit. Yeah. I'm telling you, not a month or two after that, he started shading. He started shading. <laughs> he started shading his shit. His fingers pointing at my shading. <laughs> I was like, why well, shading this shit? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like no, we, that was cool. I mean, it, like that was real. That was a cool experience working with his people. Because the first time we met him, it was like, like working with his people. Like, what do you mean? Like, like he has an agency. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not so, like we got stuff done by show. It's like this he, is his agency. His agency. They, because um. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah, it, that's it was nice. It was crazy, cool. Yeah. It was good going to the office and seeing the stuff. And, What's the knowledge you get? Just to work watch, with. Yeah, just looking at the. Just yeah. looking at how they set it up and even how, you know, they prepped the files and all that. That was really cool. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And he came out to the show in L.A. and that was dope. And we see him every now and again at, like, we go to Art Basel and he's DJing. So that right. was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, so. But yeah, 2012, that was the time we worked with them. And we had, like, Scarface on tour with us. Um, Digital Underground, Mansions yes. on the Moon. And Clyde Stubblefield was James' brother. Funky Drummer. Oh. He was on tour with us. And DJ Lord. So. And so that was different because that was like a, an eight block show where it was the same musicians each city. So you would see them again like the next week. They tour. They tour. They tour. We were on tour together. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. You know, somebody had to pick up the people from the airport, you know. And, right, right. And at the time I had the rental car and they were like, hey, Dub, can you go get Clyde Stubblefield from the airport? I'm like... Hell yeah, I'm getting. Hell yeah. I'm not supposed to be driving nobody, but I was like, I will drive right. the funky drummer to the venue. So that was cool. Yeah. After about 20 years, you have the experience of being able to get things wrong and uh, try again and try again yeah. and try again and keep and get to, to where you can do what you do effectively yeah. and you can handle both the you know the more street stuff if you want to do that still right. or the corporate gigs. You know, you can handle both of those and still keep the same flair going because you know how to do that because you've been around the game long enough yeah. you know what Quickly learn your work like what logo have you done that people don't know you have done what logo have i done people don't yeah, know like, i've done yeah that's like your your secret logos i've got one coming out for this atl first that's gonna look like a a new take on a classic atl they mm-hmm. wanted an atl like my little lightning bolt but yeah. i was like I, I thought about that for two years or so. you know just mm-hmm. doodling so I was like, fuck, I got to come up with something legendary. So I kind of based it off that, like, where the A and the T and the L are all mushed together. But yeah. I made it very, I don't know, I'd almost call it, like, just hard, harder, blockier. Yeah. So that might come out and might be something classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I tried to make something classic. I'm trying to think, dude. I'm Like, in my head, I'm looking through my logo sheet. Yeah. Which now I don't even show on. I don't even show it, on. Now it's different. like... I'll UI your website that yeah. you can make some cash on it. You know what I mean? Like, logo wise, I would say the one logo that probably no one really, I guess, unless I told you, all right, was Corporate Thugs Entertainment for Young Jeezy. I don't know what it looks like. Yeah, it's not the best logo in the world. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not the flyest one. So, what happened is a friend hit me up and they're like, hey, I want you to do this logo for this Corporate Thugs. I'm like, okay. I had an idea of what I wanted to do. They turned on all the other ideas. Right. And then the last one, I was like, okay, I'm just going to put this on and add an emboss to it. <laughs> right. oh. Like a like a yeah. like a album cover emboss? It's like like a like a 3D, right? Like a, yeah. So I'm like, okay. that's good and like, okay, let's see, because it wasn't for a whole lot of money. I was like, okay, cool. And then I sent it off and that was it. Yeah. And then one day I'm in Walmart and I go past the source or a double XL or something and I see them on the cover with my logo and covered in diamonds <laughs> on chains. You probably and I'm it. like I wish I would have did something else. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. Well, there's some. Yeah, they there's, loved it. So I'm like, if they're happy with it, you know, I'm cool with it. Yeah. You know? 
You know, it's stuff like you probably got 300 bucks at the most. Right? Exactly how much I got. Yes. <laughs> I know exactly. It's like, you've done those. And I would have said 200, but I bet you've got extra special 300. You know that what I mean? That embosses and costs yeah, money. Yeah. You know? As an independent artist, you got to get it where you can. And you got to get your 100%. money wherever it is. 100%. So, have you ever been paid in a parking lot before? I have been paid out of the back of my truck was where the painting came out of mm-hmm. and where the money was exchanged. Yeah, it was $200. Yeah. Have you- and, and $200. <laughs> I would go anywhere for $200. I'm not above getting a check or cash in a parking lot. Depending, oh, on, yeah. you know, depending on how much it is. 200 you know? Yeah. My biggest, probably some of the most solid contacts came from like Cafe Tutu Tango. Like oh, back in the day. We were talking about that place a couple of days ago. Dude, I mean like I still have people that are you know, circling back around and like... I wish they still had that place. It was... If you give struggling artists that want to fucking hustle enough to buy like two drinks, alcohol, Mm -hmm. and maybe like one appetizer, which is about what they'd give you, is like they give you tango bucks. (laughs) Tango dollars. But they were cashed in for liquor and (laughs) and food. So you'd go there, you know, no money living, apartment living in, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And you get, you paint for four hours, you know, talk to random people, mm-hmm. all the freaking white noise and stupid mm-hmm. ass conversations you hear. And then you get like two liquors and two, and like a, a appetizer. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, it had a just rotation of artists. Like, I never Beach, painted Clifford there. Bailey, all these like I guys. I never painted there. Oh, it was, it was, I mean, that's like the first thing yeah. I feel like I did. So coming from like Panama City, Florida, I was like, this is fucking weird. I'm in a, I mean, like a mannequin in the front window painting yeah. in Atlanta. What the hell am I doing? You know what I mean? But it was like, I like doing that. That was like where you're like, you should be able to do that even if you're shy because I'm shy as shit. And I, it's like, it's cool, I actually man. got addicted to to, be in public. to to paint live. Yeah, when we, we moved to Florida a little time, I was like, West Palm Beach, I found a fucking little bar and I was like, I'll paint live every Wednesday. Is that company still around? What? T- Tutu Tango. I think they're like in Florida only or some. They, they had a few. Yeah, it was. They had a few. It's a, it was a great little. I made like ten grand there one time. Oh wow! Back in the day when none of us made money, like yeah. they gave me the whole thing and I put up because I was. Psycho. And I, keep on, it, I had it, hundreds it was, of paintings. It was in Buckhead though. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's a but good I had location. hundreds of paintings. Like I, I when it clicked in the whole painting mm-hmm. thing, like I went psycho, and they let me put them all up, and it's just like all of them sold. You know what I mean? Out of there, and I was like, mm-hmm. at night, like I was like. You know, watching the ratings coming, they're like, "We just made this much." I was like, "What?" Yeah, that's. Good. And I've then I, I wasted all trying to sell my house. Like, I got nothing. I like, I had to pay the power bill when a house didn't sell. You know, for uh, like six months. <laughs> one time I went there to eat, and they had this the shrimp fritters. That's it, what me and my and, wife were talking and about. And the shrimp fritters were, we're so talking good. About that. And I, 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 at that time, I wasn't a big fan of like sweet potatoes, but it was it so damn potatoes. good that I told the waitress. You know, this is amazing. She's like, you want to talk to the chef? And I'm like, okay. And the chef came out. And he's like, I heard you like the shrimp fritters. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, these are incredible. And he was like, all right, it's great. Because I think they'd have chefs that would yeah. come in and be a badass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Make some yeah. shit or whatever. And then when I'm leaving, the waitress is like, hey, I got something for you. She slid me a sheet of paper and it had the recipe on it for the shrimp fritters. For real? Yeah, but. Dude, do you. But. My wife the yesterday catch, said that. The catch about is this. Those. It was for 50 people. Ooh, so it was like five it gallons down. of honey, you know, two oh. pounds of nuts. <laughs> so you got to do math. Yeah. Lots of math. Okay. Like okay. I eight pounds of shrimp. I was like, okay. Dude, that's a legit. I was like, I can't really do that. With this. <laughs> Dang. I'm such a frugal little asshole. Like, I'm such a frugal. You got months. like $1,300 worth of yarn. <laughs> I didn't pay for it. I didn't pay for it. I didn't pay for it. Dude, you got vinyl. You got <laughs> That's, that's not frugal, man. That's All frugal. that costs money. No, right but what I'm saying is, is about like two thousand dollars with the spray cans. Yeah, <laughs> right I over our corner. That Each can is about ten dollars. See, my bad <laughs> so, management. Like, I'm frugal. My bad management of jobs <laughs> is that I'll feel like that's worth so much more than it should be. So, like, I'll be like, oh, I get paid this much for a mural. Mm-hmm. I get this much cash but I might have a lot of leftover spray paint. Mm-hmm. I do treat that way more than it should be. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I treat it like cash. Yeah, Which I shouldn't. Cash is... 
cash. Well, I tell you, like, sometimes you'll do a project just to get the extra supplies. 100%. One time I did a project, and they're like, what do you need? I need to get all these Mont Montana markers. Wh which colors? All of them. All of them. I need them in both sizes, every color they right. make. <laughs> yeah. I still got I those markers. I approach it like that. They're like, like all of them. All of them. Yeah. So I did that for um, this one art supply company. They were like, hey, we want to send you some paint. Like, what kind of paint do you need? Like, oh, I do acrylic and oils. Which, what's your palette? I just want all of them. They like, sent me kind of like 42 oil paints and like 30 Oil stuff. paints? Yeah. I don't really get down with oils that Yeah, nice. but oil paints, you can have a certain blue that would be like 40 fucking dollars for a, a, a little tiny. I did not know. I don't need that many colors. You don't need that many colors. Investment. You know, so, and the same thing with acrylics. I was like, I, I like the colors I like. I don't, right. need, I don't need, but I tell you this. I did learn of a new color because I did a watercolor class called a new color. Yeah, I did a watercolor class and I was very underprepared for it. Okay. I thought I, it was I, a game and learned it is not a game. Watercolor is the opposite of everything. Watercolors is a serious Art. game, serious business. Yeah. And, um, you know, they broke out their palette and she was calling out colors. I didn't even know what they were. She was like, OK, everybody, get your manganese blue hue. And I'm like. I don't know what that See, is. That, that comes with it. The now, beauty of it is when you can make that shape out of water and you can drop that shit in and then blends. the drying and the yeah. salt. I started trying with salt. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and the David Cho dude, mm -hmm. his shit's all crazy, but he does a lot of watercolor. Mm -hmm. And the watercolor is fucking. It's an art form. It's is like it, looking at form. a succulent cactus sometimes. It's like looking at a beautiful piece of nature. Mm hmm when you see what the water does in some parts of the things. Mm -hmm. And you can't replicate it, really. No, because it's, it is what it is. It's you gave it to the water. Yeah. It's, yeah. Unless you can water bend shit like that. I mean, yeah. but like. No, oh, damn, I'm going to leave here wanting a watercolor. Yeah. W, damn it. Next time we we'll come back, I just have a whole watercolor like, section. Just, like, I'm yeah. so frugal. I'm I'm like, this is my waterfall where I dip my brush in. I just built a watercolor room. <laughs> In my big basement. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, Dude, I never had this shit. So it's so great. Yeah. I'm so I'm so excited. Yeah. It, it inspired me, man. Because uh, right now, I need uh, a second wind. So what? I need to get my studio together. No, I need. To, I hope it <laughs> I'm gonna does, go home and do that tonight. But like, I'm sitting here Put like some I'm shelves. sitting here like I'm sitting in my dream studio under my house, which is where I never leave, and I don't have any uh. It, maybe it's the angst. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the whatever. Maybe it's just to fucking talking. I don't have any. You need some energy. You keep, you know, just some yeah, other uh, the yeah, energy yeah. coming but in there. Yeah. Energy. So that's a good segue. But, so let's talk about what it was like when you had the angst when you first got to Atlanta. Okay. Tell, okay. Tell, okay. Tell John about when you when you first got to Atlanta. Okay. You know, yeah. Like, like what? My, the origin story. Okay. So oh, I'll start this. Mm -hmm. I dropped from Panama City, mm -hmm. went to school in Mobile, didn't learn a damn. I learned a lot, had to learn it afterwards. And then from Mobile, Panama City, Mobile, and I was like, the city that I need to go to is Atlanta because that's yeah. the city around North Florida. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and I didn't want to go to Tallahassee, so jetted off to Atlanta, like a naive beach, beach kid. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So like, what did... How did I end up here? Okay. What what so happened? Let's, let's hold for a second. Let's keep it down a little bit, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you. We're laughing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was in uh, college at East Carolina. You know, okay. you know. So I'm going to. Where school. is that? East Carolina is in Greenville, North Carolina. Okay. So okay. Greenville, okay. North Carolina. Okay. You know, and this is about maybe '98, and okay. um. A guy comes up from the real world. You know, the first season, Kevin Powell. He comes to our school and does a talk. And then okay. afterwards, you know, I go up to him and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm an artist and, uh, you know, I just, you know, you have any information or advice or something like that? Right. Because, you know, he's a pretty well-known guy. He's a writer. And he's like, listen, you know, they got this thing in Atlanta called the Black Arts Festival. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, you need to go to it. And I'm like, okay. He's like, can I get your phone number? He's like, yeah, here's my phone number. You know, so he gave me his phone number. That summer, I studied art in Belize. 
So what I was the fuck. Yeah, I was in art. I was doing art in Belize um, for, you know, that was an experience because they told us it was one thing. They told us it was going to be like, oh, we got this. First of all, they showed us pictures of like the land and the beaches and all that. Didn't show us no people. They didn't show us no houses. <laughs> they didn't show us sunsets and food. Like, we get down there. It's nothing like what we thought, you know, and he had to rough it out for about a month out there. And it was, it was a cool experience at the end. You know, we got a chance to do a bunch of stuff, stuff in the jungle, but, you know, and all that. But, um, so I come back and now the Black Arts Festival is going on. Right. So I get in my car and drive to Atlanta for like the first time and then see this thing. You know, it was basically like a, a mini Black Art Basel. And then it was such a great experience that when I came back home, I'm like, I'm moving to Atlanta. Right. You know, so I graduate um, thinking that, okay, I'm about to take this art world design thing over. That's what I said. You know, leaving Greenville, North Carolina, and then realize this fantasy I had in my head does not exist in North Carolina. And I work at a newspaper designing ads. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing um, car ads. And like, like kind of old school. Ad yeah, you know shit. when you gotta like go online and like somebody's selling like a, a '86 Monte Carlo, so you gotta go on the computer and find a picture and then Ugh. match it with the stuff, and then Ugh. and then that you put like Ugh. yeah, then you you run it in the paper, then you make a mistake, and when you come back the next day, the ads on your paper, everybody's on your desk and everybody's mad at you, Ugh. you know, because they got to comp it. So that's what I was doing. I was pretty much messing up car ads for a while. That was and. This is right when the internet was getting really, uh, the web boom was happening. The first internet boom right. was happening. Because so like, I, I feel like I was there too. Like I was a yeah. webmaster. Oh. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, come, I go to work and I'm like, listen, I can't do this. You know, so I start building my own website. And that's when I built Killustration.com. The first, t- the first one. I built yeah. it myself. My only website I ever built using Dreamweaver. Yeah. And then I decided, you know, I got to leave this place. So I go and tell my boss I'm quitting in 30 days. Which gives people enough time to take you out to dinner and lunch and right, all that stuff right, and right. give you gifts and stuff. So right. that was cool. So then I just, um, I ended up moving down here. I, and t- being that the internet was big and every, people looking right. for web designers, it was a, you're like a rock star if you could design anything on a web, right. for the web. And um, people were flying me from Fayetteville to Atlanta, picking me up in a limo, taking Damn. me out to lunch, and then flying me home that day. For a web shit? For a web designer. They flew Damn, me to Atlanta wrong. twice and to wrong, Chicago. Man. And up until that point, the only time I've been in a limo was like prom. <laughs> you know, so this was new. The only time I've been in a limo was like someone else's prom. Yeah. I was at my cousin's house. So they like, were... And, so was, like, I mean, like, and I designed <laughs> one website for myself. And See, I got my website up in 99. Mm-hmm. And it's been my website... Since 99, and sometimes I feel like maybe it's nothing I've done except that I got my website (laughs) up in 99. Because it's had hundreds of thousands of people only because it's been 99. Because during those early days, I was able to build websites. So I would put everything up. Like, I feel like that's the biggest thing that helped me today is the 99 website yeah the 90 the 2000 website yeah that website was like my freedom from north carolina yeah you know that got me out of north carolina yeah and then i moved to atlanta ended up living with a friend for three weeks and then got my own place and i worked as a art director because that was my, like, my first job was art director you know right, right, off of one right. website and i was rocking that out and the whole time i was doing freelance illustration work for different magazines. Right. Um, and that's how I started really getting my name out there. And by the time I hit Atlanta, I was in Frank 151, which is a little free magazine. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so yeah. I did illustrations for them when I was in North Carolina. When I landed in Atlanta, that issue dropped. So that was like giving me some uh, artistic currency. No, yeah. You know, kind of. I didn't got, even know that. I yeah. mean, I remember that little magazine. It was like. Yeah, they got that put me on. You yeah, know, that magazine put me on. So that was my calling card in my introduction into the Atlanta scene and there was a, a drawing session that was like some of the artists that were big in the black art scene right. they would get together at um, Spelman and then it used to be at um, Studio Plex for these private drawing sessions oh yeah yeah and t- these are some of the top artists in the country yeah and um, so I think um, Dante was there 
um, Fabian, a couple of yeah, other young artists were there. Yeah, I gotta get so it. we were all, you know, young artists there with these older established artists, and that Dang. was kind of our introdu- introduction into like the art scene. You know, so. I mean that's that's fucking cool. Yeah, like, yeah, so, like I yeah I didn't know that. Was like yeah, it was like a jam session. I didn't like, know any of that. So there was an artist named Carl Owens, and I keep telling people about this guy because I think more people should know about him. Right. He was the, the I guess the head guy. You know, older guy. He did like albums from Detroit, like Motown and stuff illustrations back then. That was the first time I watched somebody make painting look easy. Oh. You know, he did a piece of the model, and painted it, and he was like, I don't like it erased the whole thing and then painted a better picture on top of what he did. And I'm like, I would have just got another board. (laughs) I would have just erased it. But he was that good. And, you know, that was just a great experience watching somebody who was that masterful at their craft. Yeah. It's like watching a magician. That's what it was, (laughs) watching a magician paint. Yeah, I feel like like you you can tell when he did it. Yeah. When he does a trick. But, like, I wouldn't even know. But... The way you create, you would be like, oh, he was fucking sleight of handed, because he knew these he knew these rules yeah. and he applied. He was know, just like, that good. Yeah, he was just yeah. That, I felt that he could have taken his hand off the brush and it would have kept working. Oh, <laughs> that's how good yeah. it was, you know. That's what I felt like in my twenties. It was like, watch this. Yeah. Look, no hands. You know? Yeah, that's what. The, yeah, that's what twenties felt like. How would you describe the Atlanta scene to folks who were like? Should I move to Atlanta at that time? Oh. How are you describing Okay, it? so... And then John, tell him. The Atlanta scene, at least when we, uh, uh, when I got here, you know, I didn't know anybody. You know, yeah. I came in knowing zero artists other than, you know... I knew no one, no one. Like, maybe yeah. the guys at Frank 151, they, you know, they introduced me to different people. And right, they, right. You know, they told me, I was like, I, where do the artists hang out? Because in my mind, come from North Carolina, all the artists hang out together at like a bar. Right. Room. And plus, they plus me yin yangs. That was the closest thing. If you're like me, dude, you're probably like, I'm gonna be an artist now. Yeah. So like, like for me, I thought, oh, I'm gonna be at every restaurant with a sketchbook. Like I thought, it, I thought I was gonna <laughs> transform. A yeah. Like, oh, I'm an artist like, now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm gonna do a little bit of weird things that people don't do. But I mean, it didn't turn out like that. But like, I remember that feeling when you're like young like you do like oh shit i'm in a new city this is well one thing is that a lot of times in art school at least where i was coming from there was no blueprint for the type of art career that i wanted to do you Mm. know their job Mm. was okay you get a design gig that's it or you become an illustrator that's it being out and about in the streets in the music scene or in whatever scene that wasn't that was like foreign to them so there was no blueprint so getting out I had to find a place where I could meet people and I would go to like clubs and be like regulars there. Right. And that's how I met people, how I met DJs and how I met folks. And that's how I started getting into the scene even more. Yeah. You know, going to the nightlife, you know, you know, going to a bar and not drinking is kind of odd, you right, know, right, right, right. Especially when you become a regular at a bar <laughs> and you're ordering cranberry juice and, yeah, yeah. and orange juice and stuff like that. Hey, you'll live longer. No, yeah. <laughs> It's like a wild west. I remember telling my friend who was in Panama City in Atlanta, I was like, man, like I, I think I can do art here and there's not, you can make up your own shit. Like there's nothing solidified so you can just do whatever. So yeah. it'd be like painting live, doing whatever, you know, and like in that young ass, like fucking fire under your ass, it would be like, yeah, it was... Looking back, it was kind of... Looking back, there were... Like it was out of my element for me. Yeah. Like, it, it was just, like, playing in this... It was... People were very raw, you know, because we really didn't know, like, how to... At least I didn't. I was learning the business of doing art still, and all that. Still. And even still, still learning it, you know. But it was... Uh, there was some interesting uh, business dealings, you know, trying to get out there. You know, getting yeah. projects where you did not deal with necessarily the best clients. No. <laughs> you know? No, no. You know, having to figure how to get paid for the work you do. You know, there's a lot of that, you know. But the good thing is a lot of the people that were around back then, a good chunk of them are still making art now. And you get a chance to see the transitions that people make. One, as people, you know. You oh, know, 100%. You know? And some of those people that loved your shit back then when they were young, are circling back around and yeah, coming they, through as like clients and yeah, as clients. They got things jobs. like that where I'm you like, ah, oh, 20 years it took to cultivate a 
a following. Kind of a little bit of a career where you can maybe pay your mortgage and shit. Yeah. You know, back Have then, some trees. back then there was no mortgages. You yeah. know, it was like yeah. rent. No that was rent. it. It was just the rent, rent. and then whatever Before gas rent. money and all that stuff. Yeah. Trying to get that out there. You know, and also like a lot of the branding that you had to do for yourself back then is different now. Back then yeah. it was all about getting in magazines. If you got in a magazine, yeah. for me, that was like giving you instant credibility. Yeah. Because you can go to a Barnes and Noble or a Books a Million or whatever bookstore was around and see your work in a book magazine. And yeah. that gave that that enabled you to get more magazines. Well, now yeah, it's public. Published. Yeah. Published. It, was it was published. Was thing, you know. And yeah. Wisdom makes the hustle efficient mm. and easier. Mm. And it's not so much of a grind and a like three in the morning, but like yeah, it's it's a yeah. hustle. So like even the, I feel like even the celebrities that are assholes or whatever, you're like, no, nah, they're they're probably hustling their ass off. There's no way to maintain anything. It seems like without like, because you have to make a brand. I made a brand. A brand. You had to make a brand. Fucking dude that paints. Like, why do I have a brand? But you gotta fucking take that yeah. brand and like. And you gotta be very proactive in your stuff. Back then, I would actually email magazines and be like, hey, how do you get featured in your magazine? Yeah. Sometimes they'll be like, no. But then sometimes they'll go to the website and be like, okay, we'll give you a shot. So that's you know? see, I was always like, I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, it's like, I was telling Mitch, I was like, I feel like I haven't even started a plan. You know what I mean? Like it just art happens and all the shit that happens, happens. And I haven't gotten around to starting a fucking plan yet. Well, now it's you know different because I mean? like, now it's all, now it's social media driven. Now it's social media driven. You know, the magazines yeah. really aren't like that anymore. No, so now it's, nice. you know, you know, followers and, you know, likes and transitioning from, okay, how do I take the following I have and maybe become an influencer or, you know, get paid right. for that. And so right. it's, a, it's a different ball game. And I think younger artists today are more built for that you know, so you'll see a lot of younger artists out there really capitalizing on that. You know, and some of the older ones are still out there doing work. They can get it. They they got their followings as well. But it's a different. It's a whole it's a different. Hyper hustle. It's it's a, it's, it's a different. It's like a hyper might, hustle. That might be a new T-shirt. Hyper hustle. <laughs> it's hyper. And I'll be like, I'm gonna maybe edit a video. They're like, and it's a lot more work too. Yeah, it's like hyper. You, you know, you got videos, you got photos, and all that. That's a that's a whole job in itself. Outside yeah. of actually making the actual artwork that you yeah. want to do. So that's what I was going to say. You both seemingly have been very prolific, even at like growing into this new age of marketing. So, how do you, I mean, obviously, it's important for both of you to just continue to create. Like, how yeah. do you stay creating and not worry about the marketing and letting the content push itself? You know what I'm saying? Well, the content of the work. I think you got to give yourself something. Um, that a goal of some sort, of some, some type of idea out there that you want to work towards, whether it's a show concept. That's why I need a show. To yeah, finish painting. You like need it. sometimes having a show gives you a reason to yes. make the work. Yeah. to meet that goal. That's so, where my wisdom's come in. I I, yeah. I realize I need a show, so I'll finish seven paintings. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm never going to finish seven paintings. <laughs> yeah. Because I got yard. You know, I mean, I yeah, you got life happens too. Well, you know, you got you got to do that. But you, you and and I get show, fidgety. You I'm like, what can I do to not paint today? I'm gonna do <laughs> How do I avoid all this yard work? You know Being that I, mean? I curate shows, I have to approach the show more like outside of just the work, but like the holistic approach to it. Like, okay, what is the name of the show? What is the theme of the show? How do you build installations for the show? How do you market the show? You know, where do you get the money to do the show? Or is it just going to be something you do first and then figure it out later? You know, yeah. so a lot of those go in, and that has really nothing to do with the work. But if you, I still have the it's goal of what I'm trying to do. Skill though. Yeah, over, over years, I've become like super meticulous in writing ideas down. You know, I try to write everything down. Like I do have a notes. I tr- yeah. I've started. I've started. Yeah, write it down, man. It makes a big difference. I try, but I'm I'm a rambler, man. Even like, write, even write the ramblings down. There's something about that's, writing that's, it down. <laughs> so that's what painting is for me. Yeah, that's right. writing the ramblings. Down. Yeah, like that, that helps yeah. you keep you at least working on it a little bit every day so you can get yeah. closer to your goal. I'm starting to think mine's a disorder. <laughs> <laughs> and yours is, is creative. Yeah, like, yeah, it's funny. Nah, dude, it becomes, it becomes, uh, sometimes I think when you write, uh, only part of my life is organized really is my notebooks. That's it. There's only, I can say, really super organized is just that. Organized. 
That's it. Like everything else is up for grabs, but that one part, that little area, I could say. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to explain what organized means. I'd have to define organized because that's organized. Oh yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like all my spray paints right there. (laughs) So like, yeah, it's not necessarily what it is. It's just that all of the things are there. Yeah, organized. Like yeah, color coordinated. All right, final thoughts. Yes. Five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Five. Oh, I thought oh. you were going to give us some <laughs> thoughts. I, I, like, I, I thought you were giving us a critique like, on it. Like, okay, guys, like, I think you did okay today. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe next week Here's you can come thing. back. I'll, I'll type up notes. No, I'll, I would say, uh, okay. I'll tell John what's next. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. All right, so. What's next? Here's what's next. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now that we're, <laughs> now that we're, you know, on the tail end of, you know, the pandemic and everything, the next thing is getting back out on the road. Um, this is the first time in years where we didn't tour. In like 17 years, we didn't tour. So right. we're trying to get back, get the, get our beats and lyrics back on the road, do some more cities, do new cities, and, you know, keep that moving as well as, you know, outside of that, working on my own work. Right. And get ready for another show. Put another solo show out there. I haven't done one since I did the one on boxing. Yeah. 20, 2020, pretty much, that was a whole year where nothing happened. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was 2019. Was yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so that's the next thing is work on a new solo show and continue to do work as well as, you know, work on more products. Because I think I'm, I'm at the point now where, okay, what can you make that other people can use and all that? So, yeah, yeah. man. Well, yeah, yeah. Say, say, see you later. Thanks for coming by. For real, for real. Thank you for real. I think this might be something yeah. cool. Like I don't know. I I feel like this is really cool because I have I had no idea what Tyndall's setup looks like. I just know he just makes work. You know, it just shows up with work. Every time I call him, like, hey, Tyndall, we need we need some paintings. He's like, I got you. No matter what. Uh, it could be like a day's notice. He'll show up in a truck or a van with big ass paintings. <laughs> you know, yeah, so much, yeah. he's been, you know, clutch for years. Well, I'm just, I'm glad to talk. Like, I'm glad you came over. I'm glad you saw my place. Come up for dinner sometime. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, chill out. And yeah, use my fucking tools, dude. Hey, I'm about to you. Because I got to be right behind you, like, Oh, I'm getting inspiration. <laughs> that router, I want to use that. <laughs> I want to use the vinyl cutter some more. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, I thought and, my thank goal is I'm going to combine it all into one mutant wall piece. But, like, my brain is fucking segmented. And Something's also, happening, and then these are the silos need to squish together. Also, you should really frame those tufted pieces, man. Those yeah, rugs? Gonna have to do those are dope, because I want to get one of those rugs. I've got an idea for rugs. Once I get this one done, mm-hmm. I got my own idea, and I think it's going to be, like, pretty fucking good. Cool. It's gonna look raunchy and beautiful. You know, it's gonna be a raunchy, beautiful, I, I raunchy, beautiful thing. Don't know what that means, but I'm looking forward to yeah. seeing it. Dap it up and walk. Oh, we got a dap and walk. Okay. Dap. Is that like you like? Just just like say say goodbye. Okay, because sort of, oh, all right. Thank you. All right. Thank cool. you for coming by. <laughs> right. Don't tell me that to leave quite yet. Okay, because you know you really got to get the handshake right. Because I did an interview before I fucked that up and. Had to do that like five times. <laughs> I like it natural. Yeah, the natural. All right. Hey, I got a crossbow. Like, word? <laughs>